Okay. Uh, hello and welcome all. Uh, this is a small video where I'll try to explain you some of the basic chapter from class 9 economics. In this chapter, uh, you're going to study about the difference between economic activity and non-economic activity. And then we will see some definition of economics given by uh, economists uh, like uh, Alfred Marshall, uh, Adam Smith and uh, so uh, and many other. Then we are going to analyze and uh, critice, uh, criticize these definitions to find out what is the exact definition of economics. So let's begin this chapter. Uh, you can see here in the first slide, one of the question that uh, in this slide you can see uh, there are two questions. The questions are like this that what activity you do in a day and what activity your parents do in a day. If you answer this question then you will find the activities that is generally performed by you uh, are uh, these activity does not involve any money matter whereas the activity that is performed by the parents going to office uh, going to their workplace involve money matter to be very simple it simply means that we in a day throughout the day we do several activity activities like playing uh, gives us some pleasure, give us uh, satisfaction of uh, relaxation, satisfaction of relaxation. Similarly, going to office and working give, uh, earn us uh, our livelihood. So if you look into these two nature of uh, activity, then you are going to find that in economics, we have classified these activity into two broad category. And these categories are economic activity and non-economic activity. Okay, let me first read the definition to uh, uh, explain it uh, further. You can look here uh, in the slide, the definition run like this, that economic activity refers to those activity against which money is earned or activity which are concerned with money or wealth. Similarly, if you look into the second definition, then you will find that non-economic activity refers to those activity which have no economic as aspect or are not concerned with money or wealth. Let me give you an example to make this uh, uh, definition more meaningful. The first definition that is economic activity, if you look into the example, then you are going to find that when a teacher is going to a school and teaching, that is an example of economic activity because he or she earned from doing that activity. Similarly, when a doctor go to a hospital, treat a patient that is an example of an economic activity because he earned uh, his livelihood from that activity. Similarly, when children go to field for playing, that is an example of a non-economic activity because they do not earn any livelihood from that activity or they do not earn money from that activity. Going to temples, helping poor, these are examples of non-activity. Okay, so in uh, conclusion, I'll just say that economic activity and non-economic activity are the two different types of activity where economic activity is concerned with money, related to money, whereas non-economic activity is not related to money. So this is the basic difference between economic and non-economic activity. Okay, moving on to the next slide, you can see here uh, some examples are taken and uh, these examples are explained so that you can better understand what is the difference between economic and non-economic activity. If you look here, under the economic activity, if, you, if I want to uh, group the various types of economic activity, then these economic activity are grouped into four types, uh, in three types, that is production, consumption and uh, distribution. So, Production is nothing but production uh, activity is an activity where uh, good is being produced, economic good is produced by uh, involving into some production process like making of biscuits, making of furnitures that is uh, further sold in the market to earn money. So that is that is why we bring production under economic activity. Similarly, consumption uh, is a, uh, another example that comes under the economic activity. You can uh, look on the screen. It is written that it include act of using goods and service. Example, service of a barber. So when we go to saloon, uh, the service that is provided by a barber is nothing but it is an example of economic activity because we pay for the service. Similarly, distribution is a, another example of economic activity. Under this, we see that there are a lot of things like uh, we know that uh, goods, any good that is produced in the economy basically use four important factor of production and that is land, labor, 
capital and organization and these factor of production after giving their service earn something in return like uh, in case of land we see that the rent is earned labor they earn wage and capital earn interest so uh, therefore we can say that these are the service these services being given and in return they earn uh, some uh, earn money so therefore distribution is again a part of economic activity if you look uh, towards the side of non economic activity then you will find some very common examples like uh, social activity social activity includes uh, activity like marriage party uh, attending the uh, cultural programs and many so when we go to attend any marriage party we do not earn money or nobody give a, give us money so therefore uh, attend attending a marriage party is an example of non economic activity is it because it is not concerned with money similarly political activities that is the uh, we may we i may give you some examples like a uh, 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 rally that is organized by some political leaders like sonia gandhi rahul gandhi narendra modi there are many many there are many political figures uh, who organize rally where they uh, they explain people about their uh, explain people about their aims their objectives so th when the people Uh, or when these person go to the rally to uh, uh, talk to the people then these uh, the, they do not uh, this activity does not comes under economic because it does not involve any money matter similarly religious activity like uh, donation uh, worshiping they, this also do not involve any uh, money matter and hence we uh, has brought we have brought religious activity under the heading of non economic activity so like this there are some more examples that you can see on the screen which i have given to make you understand the difference between economic and non economic activity like uh, one we may discuss from this charitable activity is there parental activity is there and recreational activities are also there so let me come to the parental activity because this is something which uh, is very important uh, for us to understand uh, the difference between economic and non economic activity if we look into the activity that uh, our mothers mother do for us early in the morning uh, from morning till night she is uh, throughout the day she work uh, she uh, take care of us uh, the love that is uh, given by her so all these are nothing but these are the parental activity and for this she earn nothing she do not earn any money in return of course so therefore we say that it is also a example of non economic activity i hope you have understood the difference between economic and non economic activity okay so let us move on to the next slide to uh, see what is there in the next slide you can see in the next slide i have uh, list down some activity and uh, a question mark is put so that you yourself can find out whether the activities uh, can be classified or group under economic activity or non economic activity so you can take this as an activity where you can find out that which uh, one of which among these are the examples of economic activity and uh, which among uh, are the examples of non economic activity like uh, uh, maid working in your house or mother cooking food for the children so this is up to you so you can uh, find out that uh, uh, what uh, what are the example means which one are economic and which one is non economic activity okay so we'll move further uh, this is where we'll first start to understand the definition of economics in this slide you will see that the term economics we always use the word economics but uh, we have to know from where does this word has originated and what does the word economics actually mean before we go for the definitions if you look into the slide you will find it is written the term economics was originally derived from the greek word okio nomos where okio means household and nomos means management so yes economics is nothing but it is a management so uh, here in a narrow in a narrower sense if i say economics means uh, household management but if we look from the point of view of the entire economy then the managing the economy is nothing but it is actually a subject matter of economics so that is what economics is and there are various definition that is given by many economist and uh, we will uh, see the definition that is given by these economists and we'll try to find out what does actually economics means right so you see here there are four definition that i have mentioned one is wealth definition welfare definition 
scarcity definition and growth definition so these are the four definition that is given in your book and we will go through this definition to find out uh, its features and criticism okay so i'm uh, i'll skip this uh, i'm i'll skip this slide because there are many things that uh, i'll tell you afterward uh, regarding this slide that is it uh, is human welfare can be increased only by having a wealth so that is a very important question that we should ask uh, ourselves to find out the answer that uh, is it that uh, uh, our welfare will be increased only if we have lot of money with us so i hope you can give the answer by your own so we'll move on to the next slide to find out what is wealth definition and uh, what are its features and criticism okay so you can see here a person uh, a picture of a person is there he is actually uh, this is a picture of adam smith also known as father of economics and uh, in he has given the first definition of economics and according to him uh, he is telling that economics is a subject that tell us how to make a nation wealthy okay so before we go for this little bit discussion about uh, who is adam smith and uh, why why we are uh, taking his definition into consideration and analyzing his definition so you look look the first point it is told that adam smith is a father of economics and he has written a book the name of the book is an enquiry into the nature and cause of wealth of nation and in this book he has tried to define economics but his definition uh is being criticized by many economist in the sense that uh, this definition of economics is a very narrow definition of economics it does not include each and everything that uh presently the economics uh, economist or economics is concerned with so he is telling that economics is a subject that tell that how to make a nation wealthy wealthy by the word wealth here he implies uh luxurious metals and of course the production of goods in the economy so you can see the third point that tell us that what actually the wealth according to adam smith so according to adam smith wealth means uh, possession of gold silver uh, land buildings and of course the production of goods that is normally used for consumption so he was of the opinion that economics is a subject in which we study about that how wealthy a nation is how much gold how much silver or how much output or goods does a nation produce so the uh, wealth the wealthier nation will produce more of goods and the poor nation will produce lesser lesser amount of goods so that is what his point regarding what is economics and the definition the uh, definition of economics so yes of course this definition is not sufficient or i may say that the definition is very narrow to define what actually the economics means so let us move on to the next slide to find uh, uh, what actually we are concerned if you look here then in according to the adam smith definition the three important keywords is there or the three important features are there in his definition the first important keyword is the wealth and what what this point uh, tell uh, if you look here in the slide you will find that according to this definition economics is a study of how nation acquire wealth wealthier the nation better is the economy to increase the wealth production of material good has to be increased to precise what actually this point tell according to adam smith he was of the opinion that more the precious metal that a nation will have more the output that a nation will produce more wealthier the people of that economy so that is what actually uh, he mean by saying that economics is a study of wealth Uh, another point that we find in his definition is a study of material good uh, he told about that he told that the uh, country's uh, wealthiness or the country's uh, position is being determined or is being uh, recognized from the goods uh, material goods that he possesses uh there are some criticism against this point where the people where the economists said that this uh point is not up to the mark where uh adam smith has not taken non material good i'll let you know what is non material good but you can see here uh in this point non material goods like service uh peace 
uh, and many other things has been ignored by Adam Smith. So we'll go for the criticism, but uh, let us first understand the key point of this definition and then we'll go for criticism. And finally, if we come to the third point, then it is told that economics, um, in his definition, he is talking about economic man. And by this word economic man, he simply means that economic study about uh, uh, those uh, people or act, uh, those uh, person whose activity is self-interested. That means uh, he, this activity are motivated by uh, the means they they are they work for their self-interest uh, interest. So that is what actually he mean by saying econ economic uh, man. You can see here the in the definition it is written that lay emphasize on the man who does all activity for his self-interest. So this is uh, that is activity are motivated by pausing well. So these are the three important keyword in his definition. Uh, definition. We'll move on to the next slide to see what is there in the next slide. Of course, that uh, what I was talking about that is criticism. Okay, I'll, I'll not go very fast because uh, this is the first time you are going uh, with the topic of economics uh, and unfortunately we cannot, uh, uh, we have to go through the online mode uh, due to the coronavirus that is spreading throughout the world and uh, uh, many people are getting affected. So, any, uh, okay, whatever it is, but uh, we have to uh, go through uh, these topics to understand uh, this. Okay, let us come to the criticism. If we come to the criticism uh, of the wealth definition, then you find that there are three criticism that I have pointed in the definition of economics. In your book also, you will find that these are the criticism that is being pointed out. The first criticism that is the drawback of the definition of Adam Smith is that he has emphasized much on the material wealth or I may say he has only emphasized on the wealth of the nation. He told in his definition that the uh, uh, nation goodness is determined from the wealth that it possess. So if a nation is very uh, wealthy, then the nation, welfare of the nation is um, high. So that is what, but the point is, he has ignored one very important point in uh, while talking about the wealth, that is the distribution of wealth how the wealth is distributed among the people in the economy. So that is again a very important criticism that Adams, uh, on which the Adam Smith is criticized. If you look here, uh, the first point it is told that inequality in the distribution of wealth cannot raise the human welfare. So this is the first criticism put forward against the Adam Smith definition of economics. So he is telling that uh, or I may say like this that uh, uh, in this uh, point, generally we uh, we are saying that imagine uh, if I give you one example that imagine that uh, economy is there which is a very rich economy or a country is there which is a very rich country but only 2% of the people in the country are rich and rest all the people in the country are poor. That does not mean welfare. Definitely that is not a welfare. So welfare means that all the people in the economy are equally are equally rich or all of them are equally wealthy. So that is what one of the important criticism of the Adam Smith definition. He has not uh, taken into consideration the distribution of income. He has only talked about the wealth of the nation. Okay, uh, coming on to the second criticism, you can look here. The second criticism is uh, told like this, that uh, economics uh, means his definition is criticized on the ground that he is he has considered only the material goods. Material goods means something which is tangible, which we can see, we can touch, and we, uh, of course. But uh, non-material goods, like uh, for economy to uh, to uh, for the welfare of the economy, non-material goods are also needed. Like for example, uh, for education, or I may say like this, for acquiring knowledge, a service of a teacher is required. That is missing in the definition of Adams, Adam Smith. Adam Smith has not talked about uh, services. He has only talked about the material goods that the people can acquire and uh, his welfare can increase. But the welfare also depend upon the service of a teacher, the service of a doctor. When we fall sick, we go to the doctor. So therefore, we need a service of a doctor. Similarly, when we work throughout the day, we need some relaxation. And this relaxation is nothing but what we call is a recreational activity. So therefore, uh, uh, Adam Smith definition is criticized because uh, he's he has not considered the service into his definition. 
And finally, coming on to the last point, that is the last criticism, which is put forward against uh, Adam Smith definition is uh, more stress on economic man. You can see here in the definition, according to this definition, principal motive of economic man is to acquire wealth, but other motives such as peace, filling, love, etc. have been neglected. Okay, what is this point? The point tell very clearly that according to the Adam Smith definition, uh, he has taken into consider consideration only those men who work or who does some economic activity only to acquire wealth. But uh, our welfare can be increased only when there is a peace in the country, only when there is a feeling of brotherhood in the country and so on. So these are the few type of, uh, I may say, that is the objective or I may say the activity which we do for acquiring the peace in the family or peace in the country, uh, feeling of love for others. So these are the few things that is being neglected in the Adam Smith definition. So uh, we can uh, make some conclusion from here that these are uh, stress on the wealth, uh, consider only material good and more stress on economic men are the criticism that is uh, put forward against the uh, Adam Smith definition of economics. Okay, so let us uh, quickly see what are the things we have done so far. So if we go from the first slide, then you can see that uh, the first uh, slide uh, was like this where I have asked you what is the difference between economic and non-economic uh, econo uh, economic activity and non-economic activity. So this is what we have seen uh, first. We have to, uh, I have given some examples to explain you the difference between economic and non-economic activity. Here are some more examples that uh, makes the uh, difference very clear for us than a small activity that uh, I put forward to you uh, so that you can find out which one is the economic and which one is a non-economic activity. Then uh, uh, from where does the word economics has originally originated? It has originated from the word occu and nomus. Uh, I hope I have just now told you that what is the occu and nomus means. Then uh, we have seen the wealth definition that is given by uh, Adam Smith and Adam Smith is also known as father of economics. There are the definitions. This is the definition of economics that is put forward by Adam Smith in his uh, book that is inquiry into the nature and cause of wealth of nation. Uh, the key feature in his definition that is study of wealth, study of material good and economic men. This is also I told you that what are the key features and some criticism that is put forward against his uh, definition. Okay, so uh, this is what actually uh, thinks about wealth definition. We'll move on to the next slide to find out what is there. So if you look into the next slide, you will find that in this slide, uh, another definition of uh, uh, definition uh, is put forward by a very famous economist, Alfred Marshall. You can see here it, it, the name of the person is given and this is the picture of Alfred Marshall. In this uh, definition, Alfred Marshall has tried to define economics in his own way. And if you look into the second point, then you will find that how he is defining economics. He is telling that economics is a study of mankind in the ordinary business of life. It examines that part of individual and social action which is most closely connected with the attainment and the use of material required for well-being. Okay, so this is quite a big definition and uh, I'll uh, break this definition uh, so that I can make you understand what actually this definition actually mean. So if you look here, then we can go, uh, we can understand this definition by looking into its features, by looking into some key points that is mentioned in the uh, definition. I'll again come back to this slide, but let us first understand this definition. If you look here, that is welfare definition, then you will find the first important thing which Alfred Marshall has put forward uh, uh, for economics, he told that economics is a study of mankind, just opposite to what Mr. Adam Smith is telling. So Mr. Adam Smith has told that economics is a study of wealth, whereas Alfred Marshall told that economics is a study of mankind. It is not a study of wealth, but the first and the foremost importance is to pay attention to the study of mankind. Here study of mankind means that economics is a subject that study the human behavior. That study how human being behaves when there is a change in economic activity or when there is a change in the economic phenomenon. You can look here. It is told that economics study the economic activity of human being and that is what actually economics is. So economics 
is nothing but economics is a subject whose priority is to find out the behavior of the human being so when there is a change in any policy made by the government the people respond the consumer respond so that is what actually a study of mankind uh, that is being put forward by Ad Alfred Marshall so Alfred Marshall was correct in his definition by saying that economics is a study of mankind okay coming on to the next uh, important point in his definition that he mentioned if you look here the definition then you will find that it is written that it is a study of mankind in the ordinary business of life what does this word ordinary business of life mean just have a look it implies that every man act mainly to earn and collect wealth and spend those earning to get maximum enjoyment it does not study extraordinary men like sadhus or I may say priest or something like this. Uh, the uh, people, those who are uh, living in a cave of uh, Himalaya, uh, so we do not we do not bring into uh, we do not bring them into the into the study of economics. So basically, uh, in his definition, he told that economics is nothing but it is a study of mankind in the ordinary business of life. Ordinary business of life implies here that is the economic activity. So it is uh, it is uh, situations like this that economic study the human behavior how the human being uh, perform their economic activity and earn for their life so that is what actually ordinary business of life implies ordinary business of life may be a person going to an office and earning his livelihood a person going uh, going to a workplace and earning his livelihood so that is what actually the ordinary business of uh, life that is uh, something uh, of course ignoring the activity that a uh, non-economic person or extraordinary man like sadhus and priests to do okay coming on to the third point if you look here uh, this is again i may say that one of the criticism which uh, we will put forward ag ag against the alfred marshall definition if you look the third important key feature in the alfred marshall definition is that uh, he was of the opinion that welfare of the human being can be increased by pausing more of goods of material type so he has again put uh, back the same uh, mistake that mr uh, adam smith has done so adam smith also told that economics is a study of material goods and similarly he is also telling he is not putting material goods uh, as a first priority he is telling that human welfare is the first priority but that welfare can be increased only by posing posing more of material goods so that is what actually the study of uh, material uh, welfare so you look here according to this definition money and wealth are sim simply the mean for achieving human welfare economics does not study the whole of the human welfare but only that welfare which is of material type so this is again he brought the same topic into his definition by saying that welfare of the people can be in, uh, increased only by pausing uh, goods which is of material type that is tangible goods so uh, this is again we'll go uh, we'll see in the next slide that this is a, a criticism uh, of uh, well, uh, alpha Alfred Marshall definition. So there are four criticism that I have put forward. So let us quickly go through this uh, criticism. So the first criticism is that non-material welfare is ignored. So this is what I was talking in the previous slide where I told that Adam Alfred Marshall was also criticized because he has not talked about the non-material welfare. He told that welfare of the human being can be increased by having more of material goods. So again, uh, the same point that is the service of a teacher, service of a doc doctor, uh, service of a dancer. So these type of uh, services is not taken into consideration in uh, Marshall definition also. So and so he is criticized for his definition. Uh, some other criticism that we can talk about regarding the welfare definition is uh, something what we call uh, welfare cannot be, of course, the second point you can see here that welfare cannot be quantified. What does this point mean? This means that uh, Alfred Marshall is telling that human, he is talking about human welfare, but the point is how to measure a welfare so welfare is welfare is something that cannot be measured because it is not quantitative term it is a qualitative and it varies from person to person by having one cup of tea the amount of welfare that i may get is not the same welfare that uh, uh, you get so therefore the welfare vary from person to person so it is really very tough to measure welfare 
in a quantitative term so there this is a second criticism that we can put forward against marshall definition by saying that uh, he is talking about welfare but the welfare of the but it is really very difficult to measure the welfare in a quantitative term but there was a uh, there was one economist that is pigu uh, he has tried of course the name is very funny uh, this is the name that is pigu the uh, uh, but the point is he tried to measure welfare in money terms so later on we'll come come on uh, on the discussion that uh, how welfare can be measured in terms of money i'll come to this point afterward okay coming to the third criticism uh, the third criticism which is put forward uh, for the marshall definition is that he has not uh, does not show any relation between ends and scare mean the word ends does not uh, it's it, it is not a simple meaning here the word en in ends in economics means the unlimited human wants that we have we'll have a dis come elaborate discussion on unlimited human wants but uh, for time being i'll uh, limit myself by explaining you this criticism i just want to say that uh, the third point simply say that alfred marshall has not told anything about the unlimited human want and the resource that is available in the economy to fulfill those wants. We know, we all know that we have unlimited wants. So when uh, some when something is something is fulfilled, we demand for some other thing. When uh, when our desire to have a suppose uh, in the beginning we desire to have a car, we then uh, slowly slowly our demand increases. Sometimes uh, the just to be simple, uh, because if I go more into the topic, then the top uh, it will take time. So I'll uh, limit myself by saying that for time being, you just understand that human wants are unlimited. It is never ending. But the resource that the nature provide us to fulfill those demand is limited so this uh, re resource and want relationship is not discussed in the alfred marshall this uh, point is uh, put forward by a next economist that we will talk about his definition and uh, i can show you the slide this is what actually lionel robin definition he put forward this criticism of alfred marshall by saying that alfred marshall definition does not talk about unlimited want and uh, scarcity of resources okay and coming on to the last point that is the restricted scope of economics this is the fourth criticism of alfred marshall definition uh, there is one question that uh, is always there because alfred marshall uh, is talking about that economics is a subject where we study about human welfare and we know welfare of human being can be uh, promoted or welfare of human being can be increased by producing goods that are uh, good for our health or good for our economy but an interesting phenomenon that we see in the economy is that that commodities like alcohol commodities like cigarette and many other uh, other uh, goods like this they do not promote any welfare they do not bring us welfare to us instead these type of goods are produced in the economy so alfred marshall definition is being questioned by saying that alfred marshall is telling that those good by pausing those good which produces human welfare but the point is these good that does not promote any human welfare is not brought into the definition of Alfred Marshall uh, definition of economics. So this is a, a, another criticism that we can talk about Alfred Marshall definition. Hope you have uh, liked this uh, video and uh, please go through this video uh, in case uh, there is some doubt we'll have uh, again uh, we'll meet in the class. Uh, if uh, of course the time when the time will come we'll meet in the class and we'll have a dis complete discussions on this topic okay thank you and uh, yes of course one thing that i forget to tell that there are two more definitions we'll have uh, the two more definitions its features and criticism in the next video thank you